Good morning and welcome to the Valley Mills Christian Church online service. My name is Joe McNeil. I'm the Spiritual Growth Coordinator. I'm very glad that you've joined us in worship online this morning of our amazing and loving God. Now, if this is your first time with us, or if you are a member or regular attender, please take a moment and fill out the online connect card that's attached to this video, either in the comments or in the information about the video. It helps us to know that you were here worshiping with us. It also lets us know if there's anything that we can pray about for you or any ways that you might be able to serve uh, and help others in this time. So this is probably the fifth or sixth take that I've tried to record this introduction. And it's not been easy on us as staff to record these videos. Um, we make it look easy, I'm sure, but most of what you're seeing is the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th take. So um, I just want to showcase a little bit of that for you now. Take a look at some of these, uh, what we're calling bloopers that the staff has put together uh, of just times where we um, messed up or just couldn't get it going. Good morning, friends and family from... Good evening, Valley Mills Christian Church. Let me close my computer so you don't see it on my glasses. Hey, uh, Robin Paul here with Valley Mills Christian Church bringing you your Friday devotional. Um... Hey, Valley Mills students. I'm so excited to join with you today for our online student ministry. Uh, with When we... glitched. Hi Valley Kids families. I just wanted to take a second to let you know that I've been thinking about you. I've been praying for you. I know that you're navigating this new e-learning, but I just wanted to let you know that there's a lot of hope happening over at the Valley Kill Kids. <laughs> if you would like uh, to connect with us, uh, please. There's nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. I'm going to start that again. Ah, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Good morning, Valley Mills friends and family, uh, people who are joining us live today. We worship you. Oh, gosh. If a joy when my heart is heavy, Be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you. <laughs> well, I hope you had a good laugh at our expense. Uh, we wanted to show that because we wanted you to have a good laugh first and foremost. But we also wanted to let you know that here at Valley Mills, our staff, we're imperfect people. Nobody is perfect. We're not claiming to be. And we really want you to know that we um, are just like everybody else in the sense that uh, we need Jesus Christ in our lives uh, to make us whole, to make us right, to cover those sins, and to truly live the way that God wants us to live. So as you enjoy a message um, from Bob today as we start a new series, um, just think about that and uh, take take a moment to smile and to enjoy life and enjoy the worship service. Uh, we're going to start off with the worship team that we recorded live at the church. Uh, and then at the end, there's going to be some announcements and there's also going to be a communion time with Elder Don DeHart. So I hope you enjoy the service. God bless. All right. Good morning, Valley Mills Christian Church. Hope you guys are having a Great Sunday morning, and uh, let's begin this uh, morning with uh, some worship. So let's sing uh, to our King this morning, and uh, let's declare uh, that his promises are yes and amen. Mercy, you're my help in 
time
Lord, we know that you only borrowed that day, that grave for three days. God, we know you did not remain there, but you are alive. You are alive in us. You are alive and well. And we worship you this morning. Lord Jesus, we just want to give you all the praise and all the glory. You have done such an amazing work in our lives. We can never repay you for what you've done, God, but you, you love us anyway. And that's such an amazing grace and such an amazing love. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Welcome to this Lord's Day morning as we worship together and as we study God's Word. And I want to start out this morning by sharing with you that, you know, in the next three weeks, we're going to be looking at different aspects of life in the pandemic. That's the culture we're living in right now. And no matter to what degree you believe that is uh, valid, it's evident that things are different. 2020 is going to turn out to be a historic year. Unprecedented suffering, uh, human tragedy, and even uh, lots of heroism where people have gone to extraordinary measures to serve their fellow man. And God's going to teach us things that we need to know if we would but open our hearts and our minds. You know, I'm not a physician and I'm certainly not a politician, but we are Christians, aren't we? And with God's help, God is going to help us navigate these difficult waters we find ourselves in. And we must remember, of all things, that God is bigger than all of the problems in humanity. And he's there waiting on us just to turn to him. And throughout the Bible, we find several excellent lessons, several truths that we can hold on to during these uncharted waters. Number one would be this, the brevity of life. We need to be reminded of the brevity of life. And we have to look no further than the book of James. James chapter four, verses 14. The scripture says this, yet do you not know what tomorrow will bring? What is your life? For you are a midst that appears for a time and then vanishes. James in context is helping his readers know the truth about this life, the brevity of life. You see the nature of life on this earth, it's pretty evident, isn't it? But you know, it seems like people are living differently than reality. This is one of the hardest things I think we have to come to terms with, is that in this life, there is a beginning and there's going to be an end. And the pandemic reminds us of this, just like other natural disasters might. But does this mean we fret or we fear or we cease to live? No, by no means at all. You see, James and other writers in the New Testament and the Old Testament would want us to just have this perspective in mind, have eternity in mind. We must accept the span and events of our lives are subject to the providence of God. The book of James goes on to say in chapter 4, verse 15, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will do this or that. 2 Peter 3.11 since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? You see, amidst this uncertain life, James reminds us that our life is like a mist or a vapor. And Peter reminds us that we are to, to subject our lives to God and to walk in his paths. Amidst these uncertain times, we need to keep that in perspective. As we associate with people, as we make decisions, as we're tempted, or even if we're discouraged, keep this matter in mind that with a perspective of eternity. Remember that life is brief. And actually, this is not a bad thing because it helps us take God more seriously. And it helps us be reminded of the importance of our mission that each of us are to be living out. You know, I wish my dad and mom we're still alive today. I wish my brother were still around. I, I wish my father-in-law were still here that I could talk to him and get insight from him and share good times with him. I wish saints that I've known through the years were still here. But life is brief. And you know, you could have one day of perfect health and the next day be in the hospital. And maybe some of you have heard 
from friends. Just recently, I was aware of someone who a month ago was out biking 15 or 20 miles a day and now is in hospice care. And you see, life is very brief. And this doesn't have to discourage us, but it should compel us to draw near to God, to, to look at every day as an opportunity to live out my mission, to, to look at the things that are futile and rubbish and begin putting those things out of our lives, separating ourselves from the things that will not matter for all of eternity and drawing near to those things and those people, those values that are going to be through all eternity. You know, amidst the brevity of life, there's this confidence of eternity. You see, Jesus brings us this peace treaty between us and our Creator. And when we found salvation in Jesus Christ, it brings peace to us. And so we can live confidently knowing that eternity is awaiting us. The principle would be this. Life is brief, but don't forget about eternity. Keep that perspective in mind. So first of all, the brevity of life. Second of all, the sovereignty of God. You see, Proverbs 19.21 tells us that many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. You know, the pandemic is another reminder that we can't outsmart or outperform our Creator. God is not caught off guard by this. He is here in the midst of our troubled times. You know, that should humble us. And that is not a bad thing. Coming closer to God, humbling ourselves before God, acknowledging we are not in control of every situation and every event and every course of life. But God is able to see the big picture. The Bible tells us again in James 4, 6, that he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. I would hope that this season you might find yourself in is humbling. And don't run from that. Don't be afraid to let these difficult times bring you to your knees. You see, if you've achieved great things but forgot to acknowledge God, you're foolish and unwise. Your boasting is in vain. Your success is in vain. Your big plans are in vain. If, on the other hand, you're walking hand in hand with the Creator, you'll be able to navigate these uncertain waters. And you know, we're thankful for past achievements that God's allowed us to accomplish. And we're hopeful for future plans. But we must never forget to acknowledge God in it all. You know, it's wise to make plans but it's even wiser to know that God's purposes are present in our lives. And as we surrender our plans to Him, we will not have to fear or fret. And so the principle, second of all, would be this. God is sovereign, and we are to submit our plans and even our very lives to Him on a daily basis. The third biblical truth today would be the essence of life. What is life really all about? Well, if you look at TV, if you look at movies, tabloids, and sometimes just driving downtown, for, for some people, uh, you get on social media, life just kind of looks like a big party. And I think it's good to have fun. I like to have fun. I like to have a good time, matter of fact. But you know, we should never, ever skip over what is most important in life, why we are created, what our purpose and, and, and importance here is during the time we live. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Hebrews eleven six. 6, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You see, faith is this God-centered life that focuses on the unseen, the eternal things, rather than the momentary things. Every relationship is built on trust or faith. And so faith trumps fear. Faith trumps doubt. I'm reminded of the psalmist. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
And so even in these uncertain waters, you have a God that can make sense of the chaos and give you meaning and purpose. Get out. Try something. Do something. Be someone for God. You know, if you need to put a mask on when you go out in public, then do so. And if not, then go in faith. But we can't sit cloistered up in our houses forever. We need to continue living the life cautiously as, as needed, but live the life, the abundant life, the purposeful, meaningful life that God has for each one of us. You may be able to just sit at home and write notes to people or call people. That is a truly a, a gift of God, a, a ministry that is incalculable in its value. Maybe you're able to go out and talk to people about the Lord and you're able to just share your faith with them. Maybe you're a prayer warrior. Get on your knees and pray. Call people, pray with them over the phone. And maybe like me, last week I had an opportunity to just pray with somebody in person. I found out they were going in for a surgical procedure the next day and I asked them if they were a believer. And, I, and they said yes. And I said, well, can I, can I pray with you? And they uh, welcomed me to pray with them. You see, the essence of life is not just a big party, even though we are all entitled or at least given opportunities to, to, to enjoy life. God's not opposed to, to us having a, a, a joy-filled life. Matter of fact, He comes to give us abundant life. But in our living, we must also be about serving and giving. Be cautious, yes, but live life and live out our purpose. Otherwise, life doesn't make sense. There's no meaning found in just a self-seeking, uh, enjoyed life with the temporal pa pleasures and passing pleasures of this world. They will leave us empty, but a true life lived for God will give us contentment and fulfillment as we see His work and His plan in our lives. And so the principle would be this, a life lived by faith will conquer fear every time. So we, we don't find ourselves in a terrible place because our lives are aligned with God and His purposes. Principle or biblical truth number four would be this, the dignity of man. Galatians 6 2 says that we are to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Right now, right now is the time to be keenly aware of the needs of others. You see, now is the time. Pursuing our own goals or selfish desires can, can kind of seem out of place. Serving others in need, this is the essence of our mission. Serving others is what we live for in the honor of humanity. I'm reminded of a story of a New York physician. This physician over the last several months was serving in New York and known for his dedication to patient care. And he continued working on the front lines of the pandemic in the intensive care unit and died himself from COVID-19. And as a coronavirus pandemic took hold in New York, Dr. James Mahoney, 62 years of age, worked nonstop at University Hospital of Brooklyn, an underfunded institution that serves predominantly poor and the black. Many physicians his age had stopped working, but uh, out of concern for their age or health issues. But Mahoney, who was on the front lines during the September 11th terrorist attacks and even the AIDS epidemic, refused, according to his boss, Dr. Ferongi. There were people who really were reluctant to go into rooms, and you could understand or understand why, Ferongi said. He saw another human being in need, and he didn't hesitate to help. Could that be said of you and I? That when the tide is turning against us, when the waters are rising, and we want to retreat, we want to run, maybe the waters are rising out of the tears that you have shed and you feel like hiding but what if instead we were to run to the battle lines we were to run to the needy we were to seek and save 
the lost with obviously the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ. We were to comfort the afflicted. We were to give to those who have need. You see, there's only one purpose greater than that, and it's to love God with all of our hearts. So the dignity of man calls us to serve our fellow man, especially now. Look around and find someone to serve. The final biblical truth today would be this, lessons from the pandemic. Number five, the authority of Christ. John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, it is he that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. See, though we may never have the perfect answer for the uh, global pandemic, we can still be thankful in everything. You know, the Bible doesn't tell us to be thankful necessarily for everything, but we can be thankful in every situation. You see, it was in times of great persecution, the church grew in the first century. And you see, we have to decide today to, to grab hold of Jesus tightly and to never let go, or we may not survive. Are we living life just for ourselves? Are we trying to make it on our own, or are we a child of God? If we're not continuously attached to the vine, Jesus Christ, we will begin to wither. You see, this world is not our home. It, it's not our permanent dwelling place. And we must let the authority of Christ, His purposes, rule our life. If not, life will be meaningless and empty. Ravi Zacharias, an amazing minister of God, just recently passed away. And among many, many things he taught and said, this was one. When you come to religion, you come to a place. When you come to Jesus Christ, you come to a person. You see, Jesus tells us that in him, we will have life. Believing is just the beginning place. There are deeper levels of faith he's calling us to. He is the vine, we are the branches. The authority of Christ, we can do nothing without him. We, we pray in his name, and that's why it's important that we end our prayers in the name of Jesus because it's it's in his authority and his power his his supremacy in the world that God in flesh came to become sin for us to deliver us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light now right now I'm wondering if you can think of one word that describes your relationship with God what would be one word? Maybe if I used a word like tired, down, or discouraged, what would you think of that? If I used a word like overcoming, victorious, how would you feel about that? Do you have the ability to be truthful and real in identifying that area of where you're at with God right now? If you're truly down, if you're struggling, then praise God, look up. God is just a prayer away. And God takes those who are in lowly positions and exalts them. But he also takes those in high positions and he humbles them. I think it's true and important to be true in, in assessing where we're really at with God. Is Christ first? And so the principle today would be only in Christ can we truly live. And so we should draw near to Him every day. The brevity of life, the sovereignty of God, the essence of life, the dignity of man, and the authority of Christ. As we keep these truths close to our heart. God will help us to be overcomers. God bless you, and I'll see you next week. All right, I hope you all were blessed by that message uh, given to us by our senior minister, uh, Bob Belts. And um, it's going, leading into this uh, song of response. Um, typically, it's a song of invitation. Uh, but my hope for you today is that you come into a, a uh, 
an encounter, an authentic encounter with God, um, to know that he is real, to know that he's working in your life. And so I know that in a lot of areas in our lives that may feel like God is not present with us or in the moment where we're suffering or hurting, but I can tell you one thing for sure, God is there in that moment, in the good times and in the bad. We can declare that he is our way maker and he always makes a way through his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, he saved us uh, through, that, uh, through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And that is the hope that we have. So let's sing this uh, song as a response to all that he has done. Um, this next song we're gonna sing is Waymaker. Thank you. 
This weekend is Memorial Day weekend. It's the time where we remember those who have given their lives in service to this country in the military. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus did that for us when he went to the cross. He made himself the ultimate sacrifice for our sin. He died on the cross. He rose from the grave to defeat death and offer us eternal life. It's during this time of communion that we remember Jesus and the sacrifice that he made for us. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you, God, that you're in control of all. We thank you, Lord, that you love us. And we thank you, Lord, that you will see us through any struggle, any hardship. Father, we have the peace to know that we know your son, Jesus, as our Savior. I just ask now, Lord, that you will just bless this time as we remember Jesus and the sacrifice that he made for us. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We bow for a word of prayer for the offering, please. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for this time now where we can bring our tithes and our offerings and offer those to you. We just uh, pray, Lord, that uh, it will be used to maintain and operate your great church, Valley Mills, and the various ministries that um, operate in the church and outside into the community and beyond. We just ask that you'll bless the gift as well as the giver. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us at Valley Mills Christian Church for our online service. I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I did. I've just got a few quick announcements before we close. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, please take a moment to fill out our online Connect card. Uh, you can do this by heading over to our church website at valleymillcc.org. Uh, you can also find it just below the sermon video. If you're watching on the Facebook page, there's a link in the post or in the comments section below. It just takes a few minutes, and it helps us include you and stay connected with you in many ways. On Monday, June 8th, the Decatur Central High School seniors will be recognized and honored with a senior parade. They will be staging for the parade at our church parking lot that evening at 7.45 p.m., and we'll leave at 8 p.m. to head to the high school football field. Let's help show our support for DCHS seniors by creating signs and posters, congratulating and encouraging them. We could decorate the church windows and the covered porch area that evening. Please drop your posters off at the church on Fridays between 9 a.m. and noon, or you can contact the church to set up a time to drop those off. Now, we strive to be the church and continue to shepherd the flock during this time, and you can help by joining the VMCC shepherding team. You can provide a weekly care touch for those that are in the church family with us. Uh, you'll receive a list of families each week that you can contact uh, by phone or email, text or social media, or even a handwritten note if you wanna do that. If you're interested in being part of the growing shepherding team, you can visit us at the church website and fill out the form that's called Be The Church. It's found on the church homepage. You can also let us know by marking that on your online connect card. You can help us support the Lions Club with the We Are In This Together sign campaign. The Decatur Central Lions Club is a local community service organization that provides many programs throughout Decatur Township. 
And because of the limitations uh, that they are under, they're not going to be able to do their 4-H fair this year, which usually funds a lot of the projects they do. So they've opted to um, sell these yard signs that are a do donation of at least $20. Uh, they'll include the line, Pray for Our Country and the World, as a tribute line, uh, and they'll deliver it to your address. You can put it up in your yard there just to help show support. These yard signs will show your friends and neighbors uh, that even though we don't get to see each other as much right now, we are in this together and we support each other as a community. Um, you can check that out over at valleymillcc.org under the events tab or contact the church with any questions. And please let us know if there's any way that we can pray for you. Uh, if you have a prayer request, please submit it using the form at the church website or you can share it on your online connect card today. The church uses various ways uh, to connect with you during this time uh, through social media. We have our website, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all of that stuff. There's different ways that you can stay connected with it. And there's also three specialty Facebook groups, one for women's ministry, one for student ministry, and one for Valley Mills Christian Church uh, Children's Ministry. This is a private group for that last one. But these are different groups depending on the areas that you might be interested in or involved in. You can check those out uh, and be connected in those ways. Now, every Wednesday at 11 a.m., we encourage you to set aside a moment to pause and pray for our community and the world. Tune in to the Valley Mills Christian Church Facebook page, and we also post the video on our YouTube channel, 11 a.m. each Wednesday morning. Senior Minister Bob Belts leads us in this prayer initiative with a short message and prayer. In addition to our Sunday worship service and the Wednesday pause and pray videos, we're also sh sharing va daily videos of encouragement from our staff and elders each day of the week. You can check those out also on Facebook and our YouTube page. And we thank you for continuing to consider your part in giving your tithes and offerings during this time so that the ministry of Valley Mills can continue to be healthy and serve our community in many ways. You can go to the church website under the Give tab. Uh, you can give now under your Breeze account. You can also text to give simply by texting the word give to the number on the graphic here. You can also mail your gifts uh, to the church at 5555 Kentucky Avenue. And we do pick up the mail daily. You can also use whatever online bill pay service your bank uses. And last but not least, if you're a member or regular attender of Valley Mills, we hope you've taken the time to create your church Breeze account. We've noticed a lot of people have been filling that out over these last few weeks, and we appreciate that. This is an online church management system. It's kind of like a church directory, but it also helps uh, us to connect with you in various ways. You can log in and create an account at valleymillcc.org under the Member Access tab. Uh, this is a way for you to ver view others at the church as a directory. You can set different privacy settings in there. You can also manage online giving and see what events and things that, that the church has going on. You can find out more in the weekly e-newsletter. If you need help setting up an account, just give us a call here at the church. And that wraps it up. I hope that you have a great week and a great rest of your Sunday, this Memorial Day weekend. Spend some time with your family and spend some time with God. Have a good day.